All right, so here we have our pig dissection. So I'm gonna go through what we went in lab during our first week. So that includes external anatomy, digestive system, and the respiratory system, as well as some structures within the mouth. So first thing I had you all do was sex your pig, uh, so you could determine whether it was a male or female. So the difference between the males and females is that females have a urogenital papillae that's closer to the anus. So we have a female up top and a male on the bottom. If we look just beneath uh, the tail, we have an anus. And then we also have this small protrusion right here, which is the urogenital papillae. Right here we have a male, and if we look closer to the anus, there's no small protrusion, so there's no urogenital papillae right there. Consider this one a male. Other external anatomy that we have, we have uh, four external legs, um, well obviously legs are external, but four legs. In between the legs we have an umbilical cord right in the middle. We have uh, ears that are pinna, we have eyes, we have two nostrils that are called nares, we have a mouth, um, and that's about it for external anatomy that we went over, oh, and a tail right here. So that's about it for external anatomy. Um, pretty simple. The next thing I had you all do was open up the mouth cavity so we could see a couple structures um, within. So, zoom in. Let it focus. So the first thing uh, that I showed you all was the tongue. So this extends from the back of the throat to the very front. Underneath that tongue, you have uh, some fairly well-developed teeth, right here and here. Surrounding those teeth, you have a fairly fleshy structure, uh, and these are gums. Along the roof of the mouth, you have uh, these two different structures. You have a hard palate, which extends from here to uh, the first row of teeth. And then you have the soft palate, which extends from the back of the hard palate uh, to the back of the throat here. The hard palate is, as it's named, uh, fairly hard and doesn't have any give. When you push into it, the soft palate is much softer and it really represents the beginning of that throat. There are a series or a couple intersections of tubes in the back of the throat. So the respiratory system and the digestive system cross each other right here. And so you have the respiratory system where air is flowing through the nares and then entering the nasopharynx, which is just above uh, the structure here inside the skull. That nasopharynx is then going to connect to the trachea uh, through the epiglottis and glottis right here. So that nasopharynx is, uh, or the entrance to the nasopharynx is this hole right here. And then the epiglottis is this triangular structure right here. If we move that uh, epiglottis up some, we have uh, the glottis right here. So just behind that nasopharynx is another tube right here. So let me see if I can show you all. So right here you have the epiglottis. Right inside the epiglottis you have the glottis. Then just behind that epiglottis and the nasopharynx you have this hole right here which is the esophagus. So nasopharynx enters, or air traveling from the nasopharynx enters the epiglottis uh, where it travels to the trachea, and then food entering the mouth travels to the digestive system to the esophagus right here. So that's the mouth. The next thing I had you all do was open up uh, the pig, basically making a cut from its chin all the way down the length of its body to the umbilical cord and then cutting around the umbilical cord. So the point of cutting uh, close to the chin was so we can expose uh, that respiratory system and that digestive system up uh, just to where it connects to the epiglottis and the esophagus up in the throat or in the back of the mouth which you just saw. So right here we have the larynx so this is basically acting like a voice box The, so this is part of the respiratory system, so air is traveling from that uh, epiglottis to the glottis into the larynx into this next structure right here. And so this uh, 
fairly thick white tube with rings on it is the uh, trachea and this will extend all the way down into the lungs which are here and here. The digestive system uh, it consists of the esophagus at this point so uh, the esophagus or food traveling through the mouth into the esophagus uh, and the esophagus sits behind the trachea so it's this thin tube right here that I'm pulling out. So there's this intersection between the digestive system and the respiratory system which uh, causes this crossing uh, and this is how people basically choke to death uh, is that they get food uh, stuck in their trachea because their epiglottis wasn't closed or they basically swallowed or food went down the wrong pipe. So there's a couple other structures that you can see in this uh, throat region. So all this uh, tan material that looks fairly fatty, this is called thymus, and that's going to be covering uh, all this uh, structures here. There's also uh, this dark brown structure, uh, and this is the thyroid gland. So when you have the rest of the body cavity open, uh, you can see these structures. So in between each of these uh, two lungs, you have uh, the heart right here. So this is centrally located, uh, and it's a four-chambered heart. So you have a uh, right ventricle, right atrium, left atrium, uh, left ventricle here. There's this really thin membrane that separates uh, this top half of the body cavity or abdominal cavity from the bottom half or the posterior half. And so this membrane is called the diaphragm. And so this is how this uh, pig is going to be drawing air into its lungs. So that diaphragm uh, is drawn down. It's expanding uh, the amount of volume in the lungs that draws air in when with it, uh, it carries oxygen. That diaphragm is released. Uh, the, air, uh, the lungs collapse in volume. That loss of volume causes air to be expelled outwards, carrying CO2. So that's uh, the diaphragm right here. This large structure right here that's dyed purple, or I'm sorry, blue, is uh, the liver. So this is one of the largest structures inside the abdominal cavity. And right here, this tube that's extending from that liver is the uh, umbilical vein. So this is what you cut uh, when you peel that umbilical cord back. Underneath that liver, you have a gallbladder. Oops, I'm trying to show you guys in the video. Bladder is right here. So it's a different color, looks like a deflated balloon, and it has a different attachment point than the liver does. So the liver is going to be attached to that posterior vena cava, uh, much higher up, closer to the heart. This uh, gallbladder is going to be attached to the stomach um, right here. So this structure looks like a deflated balloon that's just below the liver. This is the stomach. Right now, this pig's not eating anything, so that that stomach's not going to be full. That stomach is attached to uh, the small intestine, which is all this material right here, through uh, the duodenum. So this small loop uh, of intestine, small intestine right here, is the duodenum, and right where it constricts right here is the pyloric sphincter. So there's this small ring of muscle that's controlling the amount of food that's traveling into the small intestine. If we kind of work our way through this small intestine and you move it around some, there's all this pink material. Let me get some of this out of the way because it's extra. There's some of this material, uh, kind of looks like a membrane that's holding all this small intestine together and that's called mesentery. This small intestine is attached to the large intestine through the juju ileum which is right here. So right here you have the jujulium that's connecting the small intestine to the large intestine. Right beside it you have this structure uh, that doesn't have an end, it looks like a small appendage that's extending from the large intestine and this is the cecum. So large intestine is, well, it has a larger diameter uh, tube and uh, it's much more tightly bound together. It also has this small appendage called a cecum that just extends and increases the surface area. 
that large intestine then connects to the colon, which is this tube that runs down the length of the body all the way to the anus. So you get the colon right here. Other structures that you can see, uh, this structure right here, this triangular structure, this is the spleen. So this is filtering out blood. On the underside of that spleen, you have the pancreas right here, which is fairly well developed in this pig. So different texture um, sitting on the underside of that spleen. You have the pancreas right here. Um, let me get, grab a different pig so I can show some other features. So just to re reorientate yourself, you have the liver, spleen, stomach, small or large intestine, small intestine, and then colon here. The reason why I'm using this pig is because there's a membrane that's covering a couple other structures uh, that we want to see. And so those structures are the kidneys. So there's one kidney here, and there's another kidney right here. So those kidneys are going to be connected to the urinary bladder, which is this structure right here by a pair of tubes called the ureters. So this is one ureter, and then there's another ureter right here.